No one can hear it. And hello, welcome to solo playthroughs. Um, we we have scenario three. Right? No, wait. They totally messed up the uh, the the numbering of the scenarios in Dumbwich, and it drives me bananas. And this thing's falling up my head because I have no hair. Um, or very short hair. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, technically scenario two, the Miskatonic Museum, but it's really the third scenario, the first Mythos pack of the Dumbwich Legacy cycle. So uh, housekeeping, Mrs. Playthroughs is monitoring the chat as always, so be nice to her. She does an amazing job. I have a couple of changes. I got a another light behind me, so it'll be easier for you to see the cards in my hand. And because uh, I, I thought I would be able to train myself over the months to hold cards like this instead of like this but uh yeah not so much so at least you'll have a little bit more of a view uh into my hand at any given time and uh yeah we're going forward with william yorick so again as we're doing a survivor cycle as uh, somebody on a comment i think on facebook coined the phrase and i'm going to keep using it because it's great uh we went through the uh extracurricular activity with wendy adams we got three xp from that we went through the uh, the house always wins with Ashcan Pete got four XP from that, and now we're going to the survivor from the Path to Carcosa cycle in William Yorick. So William Yorick has an ability to get extra XP. I was able to kill an, an extra enemy uh, or kill an enemy and added this card to it, his his unique asset, which I'll get to in a second. Actually, it's a unique event. His unique card, which I'll get to, his signature card. That's the word. That's the not even a word. It's a phrase. Uh, I was able to uh, get one extra XP, so I did put an extra XP in his deck. I won't keep that live for the investigators to come. Calvin Wright, for instance, uh, is going to be next. And yeah, I love me some Calvin Wright, so that's going to be super fun. So William York, he is the grave digger. Uh, William York never wanted to be a grave digger. He had trained to be an actor and had worked for years in Boston, taking whatever parts were available. Shakespeare was the best stuff, of course, but after many years and hardly any roles, uh, he was forced to admit that the stage was not his destiny. Digging graves was tedious work, but the dead made but the, excuse me, but the dead made for an excellent audience, and William always did love a, a soliloquy. The job took a dark turn when he found degenerate creatures eating the dead in their graves. Ever since that night, Yorick has kept the creatures at bay using whatever means he can using whatever means he can to protect the dead. Because I mean, nothing like an actor becoming a grave digger and feeling this dire need to protect dead bodies. Awesome, love it. So his uh, stat line is three willpower, two intellect. So obviously, investigating you need to find a way to do that um, creatively. For combat, which makes him awesome uh, for uh, dealing with enemies just as a base level. And then three agility, which is workable for sure. Uh, after you defeat an enemy, you can play an asset, for, an asset from your discard pile paying its cost. Limit once per round. Unfortunately, we will unlikely see that much based on this scenario. So the way the math worked out, him being the third survivor, probably wasn't great because this is not going to be the best scenario for enemies. right? There's basically one enemy and we're just going to see it multiple times and that enemy gets bigger and better it's an interesting scenario this is probably one of the more malign scenarios from this cycle i actually really like it um there are definitely some interesting ways to lose it, and and it can be a little swingy depending on certain things but definitely uh i i, I really like this whole cycle and, and including this scenario if you pull the elder sign effect the you get plus two and then if this test is successful you get to return one card from your discard pile to your hand he has eight health and six sanity i am but a simple player in this drama but if i am lucky i'll live to see the curtains fall all right so we're going to give him his five resources and as i do i will walk through my deck build and you'll see a lot of these same cards now i do have two story assets well actually i guess technically the um the basic weakness you draw at the beginning of the campaign is also a story asset, so we'll go with that. But I, I did add two uh, allies. I have Dr. Armitage and uh, Professor Warren Rice. Remember, uh, Wendy picked him up in the first scenario, thanks to Steve telling me to go do that. Of course, that did mean we had to add a tablet to our bag. So instead of the 15 tokens that are in the bag to start the scenario, we now have 16 tokens, and the tablet is a minus two plus... Whether you win or lose, return one of your clues to your current location. That is no bueno, especially when you are William Yorick and you might have a little bit of trouble getting some clues. 
we do have his signature uh, card is bury them deep. When you defeat a non-elite enemy, you can add this to it and put it in the victory display. Again, we're not going to be able to do that this scenario because the it has to be a non-elite enemy and there's only one enemy and that enemy, of course, is elite. Uh, so I will just use it for its icons if I need to, which is fine. The unique weakness can... Well, I guess we have a second enemy because the graveyard ghouls aren't unique. So I guess there's a chance that I can put bury them deep on the graveyard ghouls. Graveyard ghouls being his signature weakness. Uh, it of course is a ghoul. Uh, it is one of the grave, the the, the dead eaters that he protects the uh, that he uh, wards off to try to protect the dead people in the cemetery. Hell is empty and all the devils are here. William Shakespeare, the Tempest. Uh, Prey is William Yorick only. So how that works in a multiple investigator scenario, this graveyard ghouls would not engage with any. It wouldn't engage automatically, I should say, with any other investigator. Now, you could, another investigator could spend an action to engage it, um, but it wouldn't automatically engage. It's distinctly going after William York because it's very upset that William York keeps preventing it from eating dead people, clearly. Uh, it's a hunter. While Graveyard Ghouls is engaged with you, no card to leave your discard pile. It rarely comes up because even if you kill it, you can still, it's dead. You can still use that after you defeat, gain a card. So I guess if you were attacking it, and or trying to evade it and you pull the elder sign you want to be able to get the benefit of the elder sign it is really the only thing that would do for you my basic weakness which i randomized using the arkham db act uh, app, act not act app is through the gates it's a pack the mystery draw the top card of your deck if it's not a weakness remove that card from the game fine and then you will see how i have my card spaced out i'm going to go through the xp cards last but before that we have these are all zealot cards you have I have two Dummage cards, two Garcosa cards, four Forgotten Age cards, and then I have three cards from the special, uh, the special investigator decks that came out. Right, well, one from or two were from Stella, but it's really one card. I just took both copies of it, and then one from uh, Nathaniel Cho. And what you see is obviously Guardian and Survivor. I can get up to level two Guardian cards and up to level five Mist, uh, not Mystic Survivor, and level five Neutrals. So all of these cards from Zealot are mostly skill cards. I got basically one of each, except I took two guts instead of a manual dexterity. I originally did have a manual dexterity. I dropped it when I was upgrading in between scenarios. And then I have an unexpected courage. We have one emergency catch or cachet, however you want to say it. And then two copies of knives. Why do I have two copies of, a, of the knife? I love the knife with William York because if you use it, you discard it, you do two damage. If you succeed and you kill it, then you can spend a dollar to uh, a resource to get it back in play. It's a really nice cycle. Two damage at a pop, it's really cool. The knife is probably the most effective, most effective to use with William because you can just keep reusing it just for one resource at a time over and over again. All right, the other cards from Zealot, I have uh, two Guardian cards. I have one Dodge and one Vicious Blow, and then I have three survivor cards uh look what i found lucky and survival instinct pretty classic survivor cards my damage cards i got a peter Silvestre or sylvester i don't know how that's supposed to technically be pronounced it looks like Silvestre. and then i have one fine clothes <coughs> sorry about that uh which is obviously a neutral card we have two carcosa cards i have a grave, digger, grave digger's shovel and a cherished keepsake and then the forgotten age cards Three survivor cards. Again, scene of the crime, finding a way to get some clues. Survival knife is awesome. I love that extra action it gives you that you can do damage. So again, if you're attacked and you do, and you suffer damage during the investigator, I'm sorry, during the enemy phase, you can ex well the enemy exhausts. So even if it has retaliate, retaliates no longer in play. And then you could exhaust the survival knife and you could do two damage there. That can come in majorly handy. And then I have take the initiative, which would basically give me three wild icons if it's the first action of a turn. And uh, Live and Learn, which is like, again, that's another kind of like Lucky, functions a little bit differently. Sometimes it, it's more beneficial than Lucky, sometimes it's less. And then the Special Investigator cards, I have two copies of Old Key Ring. I've talked about that in a previous uh, video. And then one copy of Clean Them Out, because if you're fighting and you're, you keep repaying for resources, it's nice to have another card that, uh, since my, my base combat's already a four, right? So I'm gonna probably win most combats. You know, if I'm playing clean them out, I get two resources at the beginning of the fight action, which can be really, really helpful. 
So it's instead of having to bring two emergency catches and I could basically uh, be a lot more efficient. I got one less resource between a one emergency catch and this, but at least I'm being more efficient in my, in my action economy. And what upgraded cards did I take? Well, we got a test of will. It's an exile card. I can ignore a non weakness treachery card. I have one copy of sharp vision it gives me plus three intellect icons in, if I commit it to a test in which I am, uh, investigating and if I succeed by two or more I get to get two clues instead of just one I got one copy of brute force it's basically the mirror of sharp vision except for combat instead of intellect so if I see by two I can do three damage instead of just one I got a copy of ever vigilant one at a time I can play up to three assets from my hand reducing the cost of each by one I got the upgraded dynamite blast now that's two XP to get the upgraded dynamite blast for a survivor which is questionable i really like this card the fact that it doesn't require it doesn't trigger attacks of opportunity i find this to be a such a, a much more functional card and the difference between four and five might not seem like a lot but at the time in the scenario where you're going to want to play this man that's that could make a world of difference in how useful this card really is and whether you can get it out in time to uh you know save yourself and then finally i did spend three xp on alter fate i actually stepped stoned uh I guess step. I guess a step stone. I don't know. Whatever. I, maybe I. I, I think that makes sense. At least it makes sense in my head. I stepped stone to alter fate where I got the level one alter fate, and then I upgraded to the level three. And again, when you upgrade between cards of the same name, I just had to pay the difference of two to get alter fate. Uh, fast. Uh, the upgraded one is the level three one is way stronger than the level one because fast play during any uh, player window. You can choose in this card from play a non weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. One of the ways that you will die in a scenario is the beyond the threshold is a treachery card. And if your deck is empty, you take 10 damage. Well, having an alter fate around at the time to prevent that 10 damage can really come in handy, right? Um, where you just basically play alter fate, get that card out of there before that would trigger. So this is pretty sure I'm tempted. Do I want to pile of shuffle this? Eh, I won't pile shuffle it. I'll just try to shuffle it a little bit more um than i might have otherwise so again i play with the return to and i play with the suggested variant where instead of using all of just the return to setup if there's ever a an encounter set that is replacing another encounter set i put both encounter sets together and then i just take the correct number of those uh, cards and then i put them in the encounter deck i just find that it helps i i I like some of the old cards. I just I like the variety. I like how it uses more of the collection. And again, it is one of the recommended ways to play with the return to that I have uh, really taken to. All right. So I'm going to put my investigator deck there. We have our um, mythos or chaos bag. Uh, what is in the encounter set? So we have sorcery. We have bad luck. We have the return to encounter cards for the the, the return to miskatonic museum we have the original miskatonic museum encounter cards and then we have secret doors and locked doors i'm going to shuffle these since there's four cards total and there's only supposed to be two in the encounter set i'm going to take two at random and we're just going to add these to the encounter deck might as well put these all face down uh we have uh the 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 beyond and so the beyond and beyond the threshold there's six of each so i'm going to shuffle them together take off six and add them to the encounter deck so one of the interesting things about this scenario is the hunting horror the hunting horror again and that is the enemy that will come back several times over the course of the scenario uh the hunting horror does start in the encounter deck and if you pull them early it can make a world of difference in how this plays because every time he comes out he gets bigger and better uh in some pretty crazy ways hey what's up man how are you man so let me uh i should i do want to take a word um it, i almost canceled tonight because in light of uh current events in uh, america right now um i felt like it might have been a little tone deaf to proceed uh i was happy to see in the last hour it seems like things are dissipating and cooler heads are prevailing i have a lot of thoughts um this stuff does I, I, let's just say i was up very late last night watching election results in georgia and now i'm in pennsylvania so, so um this matters to me a lot 
Uh, I did want to keep this going because I know it was on the schedule and I know a lot of people want an escape in these crazy times and, and I hope I provide that for some people so I'm not going to get too political on here. Um, I do hope that as a country uh, we go in a, in a we do an about face and go in a, in a new direction in these next couple of years and uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, mildly hopeful um, <laughs> that that is going to happen. So with that said Anyone who's like, it's crazy tone deaf that he's doing this. Oh, did I just take five, six? Yeah, that's right. Um, that that he had this playthrough today. Trust me, it's it's. Uh, I did think about canceling, so I did want to kind of bring that up and address that. That uh, not everyone's in the mood to be playing board games today. Um, nice. What's up, Steve? How are you, man? All right, so we are going to get these so these last two sets it was chilling cold and creeping cold there were four of each i'm just taking four off the top and i'm going to uh put them into the encounter deck one two three four now i will pile shuffle this there are th four special cards that come in this scenario we have adam lynch the security guard we might see him we have the necronomicon which is the whole point of why we're here we have to find the necronomicon before these crazy yuck southian cultists do uh, and then we have Harold Walstead, the museum curator, and we might see him. Uh, there's also Shadow Spawn. Sh Shadow Spawn. Shadow Spawn is a card that gets attached to the hunting horror when it comes into play, and I did say when, not if. Uh, and that is going to be part of what makes the hunting horror bigger, better, and meaner. Um, so we're going to have to contend with that. That does start out of play, but once it's attached, it does enter. You are being Yo. wished good luck. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> What's up? Big Super Green and then uh, Brian, thanks for the comment, man. I appreciate it. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. So this is the encounter deck. Um, so yeah, we are also going to... The return to does add two new locations. So you're going to have a location deck in, in addition to the encounter deck. Uh, the location deck has six cards, one of which in, in the base game. Uh, the base game in the non-return to uh, one of which is the restricted hall. The whole point is we need to get to the restricted hall. What's in the restricted hall? Well, obviously the Necronomicon. Duh. All right. So the return to adds two more uh, non-restricted hall locations. So I'm going to have these seven non-restricted hall locations. I'm going to shuffle them up and I'm just going to randomly remove two. Uh, I'll roll. Why not? All right. I rolled. It's a four. So this com ah, number four comes out, and then I'm going to roll again. There's only six left, and I'll roll. It is a four. Number four comes out. So I'll take these five cards. I'm going to pick. I'm not going to roll anymore. Whatever. So I'm going to take three off the top. Wait, two off the top. It's like three. And then I'm going to shuffle in the restricted hall. Now, since we need to find the restricted hall, um, I will shall I will roll a die for that because that does make a massive difference on how easy or hard a scenario plays. Or can, it doesn't always, but it can. So I rolled a 5, 6, and I rolled a 1, 2, bam. So those are the bottom three cards of the location deck, right? And then on top of that, I'm going to take the other three locations that I set aside um, when I was doing that last part of the process, and that goes there. So there's two locations that are just removed from the game entirely. There's going to be three locations on top that I know are not the restricted hall, and then I know the restricted hall is either card 4, 5, or 6 in the location deck. Oh, nice. Yeah, Sam. I've not played San Juan. Oh, wait, maybe I did. I, I, I was at it. We played Puerto Rico. We played Puerto Rico. I, it's been a while. I haven't played Puerto Rico much either at all. I think I played Puerto Rico once. I never played San Juan, but there, there's definitely a whole whole genre of games that I'm intrigued and want to play at some point. Location is how we start this. We have the museum entrance, which starts in play. Uh, the museum, the museum. I'm sorry, the Miskatonic Museum is an opulent and stately building supported by expeditions funded by the university. Its sizable collection of exotic artifacts, curios, and art has drawn visitors from all over the country. That flips, and we are going to start there. Shroud value through three. It's like I don't know what I just tried to say. Yes, yeah, shroud value three, clue value two. Investigators at the museum entrance cannot gain resources at all. So it's not even just during upkeep; it's at all at all, which is gross. And then there's a resign ability. So, hey, eh, how important can a book really be anyway? As you approach the museum, you draw your coat tighter around your body to keep the winter, the wintry air away. The full moon drapes the building in ominous bright moonlight. Additionally, we have the entrance to the museum is locked. You cannot move into the museum halls. 
However, there's also an ability that says it's an action. I can test combat five to attempt to break down the door to the museum. If you are successful, immediately advance to act one B. So there's basically two ways that we can proceed because the act has a, we need to have two clues or we can try to break down this door. Either way, we need to get inside. I am going to roll here. So I have the administrative office. I only have to take one of these. So the other one just goes out of play. A uh, sturdy wooden door with a plaque next to it reads administration. In the hall outside the doorway, you see a row of paintings depicting the museum's many curators through the years, each adorned with their name and years of employment. Perhaps it's just your imagination, but they looked more distressed in recent years. Um, that's funny. Because clearly the dark forces are growing. All right, I rolled a four, so that's going to go there. That one's out. And then we have the security office. A plaque next to the doorway reads security. The door is ajar, and inside you catch the scent of blood. Well, isn't that cheerful? Great. I think we are set. Yes, everything looks good on the camera. Golden. All right, let's draw opening hand. I have survival instinct. Dodge. Lucky. Look what I found. That's a nice card to have handy and bury them deep. All right. Lucky can come in handy, especially if I'm trying to... Ooh, I could use look what I found on here. But I actually, I think I'm just going to try to break down the door. <laughs> eh? Maybe? I can get those clues and then break down the door anyway. That could be smart. But I'm doing an investigation of a two to a three. All right. I'm going to keep luck what I found and I'll figure it out. I'm going to keep lucky. The other three are not useful right now. So what do I get? I get, oh, scene of the crime. That could be nice. I get my unique weakness. That's a set aside. Clean them out. Useless. And Pita. Pita Silvestre. Like seeing him, actually. And we'll see. I wish I had another asset to go with him because I'm hesitant to put him in play because part of, there is a card. There might be a card or two in the deck that makes me lose him. Uh, and I'd much rather lose something cheaper. All right. I think if so I fail this investigation I can play look what I found get those two clues and enter that way or it might just make more sense for me to try to break down that door but I'm doing a four to a five and then I the only way I'm really gonna have a chance is to do lucky but I definitely don't want to be here at the end of this round because I want to get a resource during upkeep but those clues could come in handy. I don't know. What is the... What are these things? Again, Miss Katana Museum. So the skulls are only minus one. The cultists are minus one. But if I fail, I have to I have to do some badness and bring the hunting horror into play. Uh, the tablets are minus two. I don't have any clues to so the tablets. Obviously not as much of a thing to worry about at this very moment. But... Yeah, I think I'm just going to try to break the door down. So if I commit that, it's a 5 to a 5. I know I'm giving up those resources, but I don't think they're going to be that necessary this scenario anyway. So I'm doing a 5 to a 5, and if I hopefully pull a minus 2, then I can use Lucky. The worst thing right now would be to pull the 1 Cultist, because I don't really want to deal with the Hunting Horror right away. But knowing me, I just kind of spoke that into existence. So what do we get? Bam! The um, skull. So five to a five minus one modifies to a four. I lose. Oh, but wait, lucky. I win. Cool. So I did break down the door. Uh, so we immediately advanced to one B. We uh, performed the action ability on the museum hall. So we advanced with great strength. You break down the door to the museum, making considerable noise as you do. The security guard sees you enter, cries out in fear, and rushes toward the back of the museum. Well, he's useful. <laughs> the door leading to the museum's hall is broken. Reveal the museum halls. All right. Uh, it says museum halls is connected to each copy of exhibit hall. Investigators in the museum halls can spend one clue as a group. <coughs> Sorry, let me take a drink here. All right, we're back. Uh, I can spend one clue per investigator, so one for me as a group, to put the top card of the exhibit hall deck into play. Awesome. So we advance to breaking and entering. Now, there are two separate acts depending on how you advance the act. 
It's just there's two separate Act 2As, depending on how you got through Act 1A. So I'm going to get rid of Night at the Museum, and we're going to go to Breaking and, Enter Breaking and Entering. The Necronomicon is being kept in a restricted hall somewhere in the museum. If an investigator enters the exhibit hall, advance. Now, one of these I should have said, so the, the meta-narrative of what's going on here is we basically went back to Armitage, and we were like, dude, we got Warren Rice. We couldn't find Francis Morgan. Uh, we don't know what the heck happened. He just wasn't at the, he wasn't at La Bella Luna. And he's like, oh, that sounds crazy. Let me tell you more. There was this thing in Dunwich, and I killed it, and it was crazy, and there's other things, blah, 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 blah. The Necronomicon's at the museum. The Miskin Museum, why don't you go get it before someone else gets it that's worse than you? Uh, literally, please. <laughs> cool. Um, so we get there, and, and, and then we had the option to add Armitage to our deck, and we got a bonus XP. So that's that's where we're at with that. So it's like I only got four XP with Ash Camp, and then we get the bonus XP in that interlude. Uh, and now we're at the museum, and we brought Armitage with us and Warren Rice, and now we're all trying to find uh, this Necronomicon. And that's how we know what's in the Restricted Hall, because Armitage gave the Necronomicon to Wallstead, and Wallstead is keeping it and sa keeping it safely on display in public, which makes a lot of sense. So anyway, I did one action. That was it. My second action is I'm moving, and my third action is I will put... Man, I'm really hesitant to put Peter Sebestre in play. I will... Move to the, uh, I don't know. I'll go to the administration office. Shroud value two. All right, that's workable. I can make that work. So it has two clues on there. You cannot investigate the administration office if you have four or fewer cards in your hand. Well, I have three. And then this office is metic meticulously organized from the books in alphabetical order on the shelves to the stacks of forms organized by category on each desk. A code is draped over one of the nearby chairs. Perhaps somebody other than the security guard is still here at this late hour. Ooh. All right. Cool. Enemy phase. No enemies. Upkeep phase. Drawing a card. I got take the initiative. Taking a resource. So I do have four cards in my hand now, uh, but I'm going to, uh, again, I can't investigate until I have five. So if I have four or fewer, can't investigate five or more, we're good. Meet those phase. First doom on the agenda. Encounter card. For each card in your hand, if there's a copy of that card in your discard pile, you take one horror. We're good. If you take no horror from this effect, discard the top three cards of your deck. Oh, please be the graveyard ghouls. Oh, through the eight, through the gates is out. Alter Fate is out too. That's sad. Oh, and, and uh, Grandpa Armitage also goes bye-bye. Well, you know, one out of three was good for me. So I guess I, I got to take those odds. Considering... All right, so again, this is one of those dumb scenarios that attacks your deck, attacks your deck, attacks your deck, because again, if you get a Beyond the Veil uh, in your play area, that's the one of the ways that you will lose. Uh, probably the most common way I lose this scenario is that. All right, uh, so that was the Mythos phase. We go to the Investigation phase. I'm going to draw a card so I can have five or more in my hand. I get Guts. Happy to do that. I'm going to investigate. I'm investigating a two to a two, and I kind of want to lose, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get um, I need to get one of my uh, my, my old key rings out. So two to a two. What do I get? Tablet. Minus two. Return one of your clues to your current location. So that triggers. We're good. I don't have any clues, so I don't have to worry about that. But I lost by two, because my skill value modified down to a two. And then after that, fast... It cost me two resources. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less. While investigating, I failed by two. Discover two clues at in your location. Fantastic. All right, so that's done. Uh, so that was my second action, right? Because the first action, I had to draw a card. My second action is I did that. Um, look what I found is fast. And then I will move to the museum halls. Yes? Yes. And now I can start putting some other things in play and... Take the crime will help. Give me get some clues. Take the initiative. Um, could be in pretty decent shape. We'll see how it goes. All right. Enemy phase. No enemies. Upkeep phase. I'm drawing a card. It is Professor Warren Rice. He, well, he could help. I might want to put him in play instead of Peter. That extra uh, intellect bonus would be nice. I'm not sure how worried I need to be about horror, but I might eat those words. Uh, and I take a resource. Mythos phase, we are going to put a Doom on the agenda. We're taking a card. 
Bam! Beyond the Veil. There you are. And of course, my Alter Fate, Alter uh, Fate card got discarded. That's unfortunate. Uh, another fun thing about this card is it also surges. So uh, we have that bonus to deal with. Uh, so since that surges, I draw another encounter card. Twist of Fate. Uh, here, here's where I start worrying about her. All right, we're going to uh, reveal a random token. I revealed a... Oh, Elder Sign. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing happens. I'm immune to you, you silly... Uh, whatever that was. Twist of Fate. All right, cool. I'm going to spend three... Hmm. Now, I'm going to spend three. I am going to put Professor Warren Rice into play. And, and and hopefully that intellect will come in handy. So that cost me three. I'm going to spend one of my clues to do the ability uh, on, that is on the museum halls. I put a the top card of the exhibit hall deck into play unrevealed. So that just goes face down and I'm running out of space. All right, cool. So that just goes into play face down. Now, the reason I had to sleeve them up is that the return two cards, uh, the way the... The way it was, there was actually a, something wrong in the artwork that you could tell which was from the return to and which wasn't. So I just put them in blue sleeves to uh, to make it impossible for me to tell. And then my third action is... I don't... Nah, I guess I'll move. That could be helpful with Steen of the Crime. Yeah, we'll move. So I'm going to move in with my third action. Bam! What do we got? Exhibit Hall. Medieval Exhibit. Shroud value 3. Clue value one. After you fail a skill test while investigating this location, take one damage. Victory point one. Uh, yeah, between scene of the crime, we'll see. I, I mean, I also take the initiative. I'll probably use scene of the crime now and just kind of get that out of the way and get that clue. And then if I, oh, elder sign. Wait, no, that was sorry. That was it's only the elder sign effects only count when you're actually doing a skill test. So just revealing a token doesn't it's not the same as drawing that token. So I don't get to draw I don't get to take a card out of my discard pile. But if I ever do, I would definitely be getting that alter fate card back because that could be really important here. Alright, so those are my three actions. Enemy phase, no enemies, upkeep phase. I'm drawing a card. Oh no. <laughs> Why? Oh shoot. Uh that's fine. Wow, that's really weird. All right, so I got the Graveyard Ghouls. Awesome. <laughs> uh, they engage with me, and then I take a resource. So at least both of my uh, my weaknesses are out of my deck. Uh, that's that's something that doesn't happen all the time. Mythos phase. We're putting the third Doom on the agenda. Again, Shroud, uh, Doom, we check the Doom threshold. Doom threshold is five, so we got some time. And then we draw on a counter card. It is Beyond the Veil. However, there is already a copy of Beyond the Veil on my threat area, so go away. But that does gain Surge in there. Uh, it has surge either way, I mean. And then we have Night Beyond Void. Revelation. Put one resource on Shadow Spawn, even if it is out of play. That's not good. So when uh, first time you see the Hunting Horror, he will come in as even bigger and better than he normally does when he first appears. All was blackness beneath as the fluttering legion surged northward, northward amidst rushing winds and invisible laughter in the Aether. All right. Now remember, let's, uh, let's go through the Shadow Spawn mechanics here. Shadow Spawn remains attached to Hunting Horror even if it enters the Void. Hunting Horror gains plus one fight, plus one health, and plus one evade for each resource on it. And if there is at least three resources on Shadow Spawn, Hunting Horror also gains massive. Awesome. Well, I guess I should try to beat up some ghouls. Yes. All right. So I'm going to spend. I'm going to play. Spend two resources. Uh, no. Oh man, I'm thinking do I just try to evade him? But if I do, then I, I'm gonna yeah. So I'm gonna spend two resources. Scene of the crime. I discover one clue in my location. I could have gotten two, but there's only one there. That does not provoke an attack of opportunity. I also the last clue was discovered at my location, so I can exhaust Professor Warren Rice and draw a card. It's a knife. That could be helpful. I'm going to commit, take the initiative just to evade this guy and try to get a little bit more set up. So I'm going to commit, take the initiative. I have, I have completed one action. So take the initiative loses one of its wilds. I'm doing a 5 to a 2 to try to evade the graveyard ghouls with my second action. 
And do do minus one. Graveyard Ghouls is evaded. And then my third action, I'm going to move here. All right, so I definitely use a couple of strong cards in the process, but I think that made the most sense. The ghouls can really wreck your life, and I don't, I'm trying. I don't want to get cute with them. I uh, just want to get them defeated. So enemy phase, uh, he's exhausted, so his hunter keyword doesn't trigger. Upkeep phase, that readies. This readies. And then we both draw, well, we both. <laughs> I've been playing two-handed a lot lately, if you can't tell. I draw a card, and I take a resource. All right, Mythos Phase, the fourth Doom on the agenda. We draw Secret Door, tattoo the location with the most investigators. Oh, I really don't like this card either. All right, uh, so this is so this is the, the Return To's version of Locked Door, but it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit worse in a lot of ways. Um, so it's attached to the location with the most investigators without a secret door attached. Investigators cannot leave this location, uh, test, three willpower or three intellect to get rid of it now remember my intellect is a three my willpower well, i got a guts that's fine i'll probably let the graveyard ghouls come attack me and just deal with them then so my first action i'm going to put the knife into play for one resource my second action is i'm going to commit guts and give me a five to a three to try to get rid of the secret door. Bam! Tablet. Uh, I succeed. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I succeed, but one of my clues goes to my current location. So that's fine. Thank you, Steve. He's laughing. <laughs> I get overpowered because I draw a card because of guts. And then my and then this goes away. So secret door now can be discarded. So that was my second action. And then my third action is, do I try to get that clue? It would actually give me another card draw. Yeah, I'm going to want that clue. We'll see. All right, I'm going to do a three to a two and try not to pull another tablet because that would be a super double whammy. Ah, you know what? Nah, it's not worth the risk. I'm going to spend a clue to put another exhibit hall into play. Yeah, this is gonna this could be a little dangerous in what's coming up here. Alright, so enemy phase, hunter keyword, he comes, punches me in the face. I'm gonna give all that to Warren. Thank you, Warren, for your service. Oh I said I'm gonna give the Warren and then put it on myself because that makes sense. Uh I'm gonna draw a card. Brute force. Ooh, that's a good pull. That is a good pull. Alright, good. Take a resource. Mythos phase. Fifth Doom on the agenda. What happens? We advance. Awesome. Boom. From the shadow of the museum halls, a terrible creature slithers forth and long and forth, long and serpentine, and propelled by black leathery wings. If hunting horror is in play, add a doom to it. It is not. If hunting horror is not in play, search the encounter deck discard pile in the void for the hunting horror and spawn it in the museum halls. Uh, shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Great, so we got to... Oh, we are shuffling this back into the encounter deck. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Uh, where are you hunting hard? Here it is. Cool. So, this goes... Shuffle that. So, shadows deepen. The shadows in the museum grow and become darker as the shadows lengthen and shift. They begin to suggest the sinewy body of an uncounted creature darting at the periphery of your awareness. Force, when hunting horror enters play, attach a set-aside copy of Shadow Spawn to it. Now, one of the oddities of this game before the return to is that technically, technically, when hunting horror entered play, because you're on agenda 2 one uh, B instead of one A or two A for that matter. You actually didn't attach Shadow Spawn, uh, but in the Return Two, they closed that loophole by saying that Force ability that's on Act One A and uh, Act Two A and Three A, I think, uh, is always in play no matter what. So um, the fact that this was still active, we do attach Shadow Spawn. Shadow Spawn again already has a resource on it. I'm going to turn this upside down because it's easier to move this way. Bam, and then we have this instruction, Shadow Spawned 
enters the shadow spawn remains attached to the hunting horror even if it enters the void hunting horror gets plus one fight plus one health and plus one evade for each resource on shadow spawn as i already read before all right the hunting horror itself hunter and retaliate at the start of the enemy phase reveal a random token from the chaos bag the reveal token is any of the icons ready it so that really only applies if it's exhausted right and then when hunting horror leaves play place it in the void which is where it came from so i'm going to put that resource on resource on shadow spawn uh, and then again, we have plus one health. So it, it comes in at a two, three, two, but oh, that resource makes it a three, four, three, which is decidedly worse. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. What am I going to do? All right. Let me try to kill the ghouls because they're awful. I don't have, oh man, this is bad. I don't have any assets even to put in play. Maybe I kill the hunting horror first. And then the ghouls attack me again, but then I can get double damage twice because of the knife. Brute force. No, brute force is too good right now. Brute force is too good. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, do a, a standard combat against the graveyard ghouls. Right. Uh, I'm going to commit brute force. Uh, it can be committed to a basic fight action, which is what this is. I get two extra copies of. I get two extra fists. So I'm doing a four, five, six, seven to a three. If I succeed by two, sucker's dead. Uh, do I want to commit overpower? Yeah, I really kind of want him dead. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, sure. Overpower is committed, so I'm doing a nine to a three. So anything that only that kills me right now is the tentacles. And boom! <laughs> tentacles! Oh, that's amazing! That's so good! Alright! Well, that was fun. Alright, let's do I tell you, man, I could not I could not have a script writer write better scripts for these playthroughs. I am gonna do the knife, and I'm gonna commit the other copy of the knife, because who needs two knives when you're William York? I'm doing a four, five, six for the good of the icon, six to a three for one damage. Oh man, that was really gross. Six to a three, bam, minus two. That's not tentacles. Better, better. So there's one damage. And then I'm going to throw this knife at him to make it a six to a three again. Because he has plus two when you throw it. Wow. I'm shook, man. That brute force was awful. Uh, come on, six to a three, minus three. Woo! All right. So that does two damage, and that was discarded. Because I defeated him, excuse me, defeated him, there's a couple things that could happen, right? My ability triggers after I defeat an enemy. Uh, and now that he's defeated, he's no longer engaged. So with him being defeated, he's gone. But then I could also have my special ability where I can spend the one resource to put that knife back in play. Right, because I after I defeat an enemy, I can do that once around from my I can I can play an asset from my discard pile. Well, that was fun. Wow. Yeah, that brute force would have been a lot better if that had succeeded. <laughs> and I wasted my overpower too. Oh, that's so bad. All right, enemy phase. Well, that was all three of my actions. I'm gonna get attacked again. Hunting hards, and I'm gonna put a horror on on uh, Warren Rice and take a damage on William York. Awesome. Uh, and he's not massive yet, so he technically should also be in my play area. Fine. Right. Enemy phase uh, is... Uh, he already attacked me, so that's done. Upkeep phase, I draw a card, emergency cash, and I take a resource. Meet those phase. I'm putting the first doom on agenda... T oh, did I forget to draw the counter card? I did. I did forget to draw on a counter card. That's not good. So this is for last turn. A press of miss attached to your location. After investigator the location draws one or more cards, the investigator must test three willpower. If the investigator fails, he chooses and discards an equal number of cards. Well, I did draw a card, so I do have to test that. I'm doing a three to a three. Oh, this is really bad. Uh, I'm going to fail. Oh. Uh, it's a minus three because hunting horror is there. So I failed that. So now I have to choose and discard a equal number of cards. I will 
Warren Rice is probably not going to be very long for this world, so I'm going to discard the emergency cash. And now we draw the encounter. Now that we go to the Mythos phase, we put a Doom on the agenda, and we draw an encounter card. Bam. Crypt Chill. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. This isn't going well, guys. <laughs> it's going decidedly poorly. I think I try to evade the hunting horror. So I can put the the knife back in my discard pile. He's got four health though. Oh yikes. Alright, I'm doing a three to a four. An elder sign right now would be pretty darn awesome. So I reverse I jinxed myself, kinda of reverse jinxed myself is, is the real question. Uh, bam! Minus two. So I fell. I choose this card and ask that I control. That was super fun. And sometimes this scenario can be super easy, and sometimes it is just brutal. He's got plus one to his evade, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. It's a four to a three to fight. He has retaliate too. <laughs> this is all sorts of bad. And if I draw a card, I have to test oppressive mists. None of this is good. None of this is good. I think I just try to evade three times. I have to get away from this museum house. Oh, this is really bad. I mean, part of me is just like, I go to the museum entrance and resign. If I had three resources, I'd probably put Peter into play. I can't attack without retaliate. I got nothing to boost it. So I got the plus one, I got the other sign. I think there's two zeros in there. I have no clues, so the skull doesn't do much to me. Yeah, let's try to evade. I have to get out of this location. I'm doing a three to a three. It ain't great, but I don't really have much of a choice. The old good test at a plus zero. That is exactly how they, they draw this game up. So three to a three. Oh, zero. Ooh, all right, <laughs> I evaded this dude. That was amazing. Uh, I need to move. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I know. I'm gonna move to a place that's like you lose all your actions. All right, I'm going to. That's fine. I gotta risk it. I'm gonna move here. What do we get? So shroud value three, clue value two, it also has a victory point. After you fail a skill test while investigating, you lose an action, not great. And then I'm going to draw a card. Man. Ooh, survival instinct, that could come in handy. What do we got now? I'm gonna do, uh, at the start of the enemy phase, I need to pull a, Thing from the bag, if it is a icon, he readies, it is a zero again. Now he readies in the upkeep phase, and I draw a card. There's the old key ring. Don't hit that, and I take a resource. All right. If I get those two clues, man, I'm gonna, the, if, I, if I pull the tablet again, that's just gonna be super bad. Meet those phase. Second, do second doom. I draw this locked door. Attached to the location with the most clues. Now I have two clues here, two clues here. I can choose this one. The attached location cannot be investigated. That's fine.
four to a three. All right, I'm going to put the old key ring to play with my first action. And that comes in with two. I'm going to investigate. If I fail, I lose an action, so that's not great. But I have, um, so I'm going to use the investigate action on the old key ring. That reduces the strat to a one, and then Warren Rice gives me a plus one. So I'm basically investigating with a three to a one. Three to a one, what do we got? Minus one, so that's one clue. Since I succeeded, I have to throw away one of those keys. And then we're going to do it again. I'm investigating a three to a one with my second action. Oh, my third action. My third and final action. So yeah, that's even better now because if I fail, then I don't lose an action because I have no actions to lose. This would be very nice if I can pull this off. Zero. I'm on a hot streak. Uh, I get that clue. I get that. I lose that last um, key. This is this card because it has no more supplies on it as per the terms of that card. And then I exhaust Warren Rice and I grab a card. The other old key ring. <laughs> All sorts of special. All right. Enemy phase. Hunter keyword triggers. Dude goes there. He is going to attack me. Um, I get one and one. Again, he is not massive yet. So I'm going to basically assign all of that to Warren Rice. I don't want to do that. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, all that to Warren Rice. He is toast my ghost. Thank you for your service. All right. Uh, investigation phase, or I'm sorry, our key phase. I draw a card. It is ever vigilant, a little bit late. And I take a resource. So the nice thing about Ever Vigilant is that even though I'm not going to use it to get assets to play, although I could do it, I don't have enough. Uh, actually, wouldn't it be crazy? Is um, you have the two uh, intellect icons, which can really come in handy, uh, especially with with the Guardian or like I'm playing with it right now with William York. Uh, meet those phase. We're going to put a Doom on the agenda. That's the third one. Encounter card. Terror from Beyond. Peril. So in a, obviously in a solo game, Peril doesn't mean all that much. Uh, choose one of the following card types. Asset, skill, or event. <sighs> well, I'm going to choose event because I don't want to get rid of my assets or this skill. So that was mildly unfortunate. Uh, so I have to discard all those cards in my hand when that card type is of the chosen card type. And uh, yeah, that skill is too strong. Oh, uh, it's really bad. Four, five, five to a three. Yeah. All right. So I am going to... Oh, this is bad. I don't feel lucky. I could try to do survival instinct right off the bat. But if that fails, I'm really leaving myself vulnerable. But at least it doesn't trigger attacks of opportunity. My deck's getting thin, too. <laughs> that Beyond the Veil is going to kill me. Uh, I do have two more clues, so if I can get really lucky here, again, I know that the two from the top could be the uh, the restricted hull. Um, I'm going to have to get lucky here. I'm going to play Survival Instinct. I'm doing a four to a three, and if I succeed, I can move to a connecting location. Part of me was thinking about taking two attacks for opportunity to get Peter in play. Add something that makes sense. Four or three, give me a minus one, please. Bam, minus four. It's like minus one, but just a little bit higher. All right. Well, a tablet would be super gross here. Because if I get a tablet, then I'm uh actually one of these halls has gives you like additional if you it gives you additional uh, evade. Um. Yeah, the one tablet would be the worst. I take three attacks to get Peter in play. Not the worst idea. And I think that's that's the smarter way to go. So I'm going to take a resource, which gives me an attack of opportunity. 
And then I'm going to put Peter into play. He's not in play yet. I get another attack of opportunity. So I spend the resource I just got and then the two I had. Uh, another attack of opportunity. So I'm to three damage and two horror. And that was my third action. In the enemy phase, hunting horror attacks me. I take a damage and a horror. I'm going to put that horror on Peter. And I draw a card. Ooh, a test of will. I take a resource. Meet those phase. Fourth doom on the agenda. Drawing in a counter card. It is cursed luck. Oh, man. That's that math's not gonna work. So I, I got I'm gonna play a test of will. Uh, so that costs one of my XP, so I, I, I'm going to exile it. So exile, again, I'm going to have to respend the XP to get that back at the end of this, this scenario if I want it back. Um, so I just canceled that treachery card because, uh, again, the math, to give me must, minus one on all my skills is just really bad. So now I'm trying to evade. So I have a three plus the one from Peter Silvestre, or Sylvester to a three because, again, it's two plus the, the Shadow Spawn. Uh, four to a three, minus one. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly why I need to get rid of Cursed Luck. I'm going to move here. And I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to test that again, but there's nothing I can do about it. All right, so I'm going to move there. I'm going to spend a clue, put another location into play. So that card there could very well be the Restricted Hall. All right, Hunting Horror, if I get an icon, he readies. So it's basically like one third of the time he's gonna ready. He doesn't ready. Upkeep phase, I draw a card, but because of a pretty, oh, he readies there. Because of a press of, oh, end of my turn, I heal the horror too. A lot, of go a lot going on in this scenario. Um, I have to test Oppressive Mist. I'm doing a 3 to a 3. If I fail, I have to discard a card because I just drew a card. Minus 2, so I fail. I'm going to get rid of my Teddy Bear because I don't really need a Teddy Bear right now. I get a resource. Meet those phase. Fifth Doom on the agenda. We get a Baleful Welcome. Peril. Choose two of the following actions. Investigate, fight, evade, move, or play. For the remaining of this round, each investigator cannot perform each chosen action. If this is not the first copy of Bethel Welcome, draw this draw on this phase, choose three actions instead of two. I'm gonna say that I well, I need to move. I might want to investigate. Um, I don't think I'm doing any fighting. So and I'm gonna do playing. So I'm gonna say fight or evade. I'm not gonna do any fight or evade actions this round. Cool, so I just want to find the restricted entrance, and I need to find it badly. So I'm going to spend this clue to get another location of the play from the location deck. That was my first action. My second action is I'm going to put my old key ring into play. And then my third action is I'm going to move and hope it's the restricted hall. It is the Athabascan exhibit. Shroud value 1, clue value 0. After you enter this location, lose all your remaining actions and immediately end your turn. While you're in this location, you get plus 2 agility. So, it is what it is. It has no clues, uh, but there's a lot of things about that location I like. I might actually wait till the Hunting Horror gets over to me so I can evade him easier. Um, and I do have that clue there uh, just kind of sitting for me. So, there's, there's some possibilities. Uh, but that's one of the reasons I got that. I knew that car was still potentially in the deck, uh, so I, I did want to get the old key ring out in case I lost all my remaining actions. All right, enemy phase. The hunting horror is going to go hither, and then I draw a card. It is dodge. Don't hate that, and I get a resource. Meet those phase. Six doom on the agenda. I'm drawing in a counter card. What is it? Uh, place one resource on shadow spawn. So evading this guy. Just got a little bit harder. Again, those are from the return to. So, I mean, this dude came into play once, but he still has two resources on him already, thanks to the return to. It's it's pretty nasty. Yikes. The good thing is he doesn't do additional damage, because that would be just awful. There's one clue there. I think I only pulled the tablet once. 
or once when I had clues, I should say. What am I doing? That's the question I ask myself. I'm going to, oh, if I draw too many cards, <laughs> I'm going to die that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yikes! I need a sip of water. I need to think about this. Um, last time, yeah, I, I don't know, do I, do I not smile? I should smile more. That All was, right. that was a long time ago. ago. I, this playthrough has been nuts, man. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, this scenario is difficult. I, I've definitely read a lot of commentaries that it's just easy, and I'm like, maybe, but like, woo! I don't know, man. Like, this is not, this has not come out in the uh, best of ways. And the crazy thing is, like, of course, he comes out right when, when my ghoul came out. And it was like, <laughs> I, uh, I found myself trapped with a bunch of enemies again. I, I don't know how I pulled this one off. I do have the old key ring to help with some clues, but this is going to be tight. Like, really tight. All right. Um, I'm, not, I'm not moving from there. I want to take advantage of that two agility. If I can evade him, come here, get that clue, and then the time after that, spend the clue and get, you know, it's it's 50-50 whether that's a restricted hole. And obviously I need to get the restricted hole. Um, so I think I draw a card. Oh, Dynamite Blast could come in handy. Dynamite Blast for the win. Don't hate that one. And now I need tons of resources. And again, the four versus the five, you can see why that makes a, a pretty significant difference. So I'm going to take two resources on my last two actions. One and two. And then partially I need to protect my deck because, again, as soon as I get no cards on my deck, that immediately triggers 10 damage, and there's no way I'm coming back from that. I almost took the... There's a card like Devil's Luck or something that you can cancel, like 10 damage and or horror. And, I, and I'm never tempted to take it except for when I'm playing Dumbwitch because that Beyond the Veil can really, really ruin your life. All right, so Hunting Horror is going to come and attack me. Uh, he goes into my... So as soon as he gets a third resource, he's massive. Massive has some advantages too. So that's going to be a, a Horror on Peter, a Damage on me. So I am up to five. I have a Cushion of three, which isn't awful. Upkeep phase, I'm going to draw a card. Unexpected Courage is very nice. And I'm going to take a resource. Now my agility is a 6. Remember, I need to, he's a 4 because he has 2 resources on him. Uh, but that could be a And I have no clues, so the, the tablet's not going to screw me here. Alright, Mythos phase. 7th Doom on the agenda. The agenda advances. Bam. What do we get? The creature does not relent. Yeah, clearly. Pursuing you throughout the museum. If the hunting horror is in play, add a doom to it. That's it. If it's not in play, you would have to shuffle the encounter, discard pile into the encounter deck, all that stuff. But he is in play, so we don't do any of that. We go to Agenda 3. In every shadow, the creature in the museum grows larger and more terrifying with each passing moment. Its body slithers from shadow to shadow, every corner of every room, a potential hiding place for that hideous beast. Uh, same for stability. Drawing a card. Please be good to me. Obscuring fog. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so that goes there. No big deal. I can't. It just plus two shroud until I successfully investigate. But there's no clues there, so I don't care. I don't care. All right, we are going to, and that's choose and discard card to just that's that's better. All right, I'm going to try to evade this dude. It is a six to a. Four. If he was massive, I'd probably just leave and take that attack. Um, but it is what it is. Golden. Zero. He is evaded. Bye-bye. Now I'm going to move here. I'm going to investigate with the old key ring. So I reduce the shroud value to a zero. I pulled a skull, it's minus one, I succeed. Well, it's a zero. Again, my, my value can't modify to less than a zero, so I would have succeeded unless I pulled the tentacles. Uh, I was smart enough not to say that this time. So I evaded, I moved, I investigated, and since I successfully investigated, I lose my old key ring. Uh, this would be very bad for me to have him ready, so hopefully he does not. 
Okay, so it's coming about Tony Morgan. I mean, it's oh, Tony's the best. <laughs> yeah, I love Tony. I'm actually playing through Dumbwitch uh, with a, a, a friend. With that Tim commenting. What? Oh, that's, dude, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, well, like, now you know why I, I was struggling. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, Tony's the best. The best. All right, what are we doing? Um, don't be a don't be a symbol. Yeah, oh, sorry, we're getting a little bit lucky there. Uh, upkeep phase. This dude readies. I'm gonna draw a card, and I take a resource. Ooh, sharp vision could be massive. All right, this might actually come together, <laughs> despite all odds. Oh, but since I drew a card, I have to do this stupid test. Um, it's a three to a three. Bam, minus two, I fail, so I choose and discard a card. I'm actually gonna discard the dodge, which is not what I thought. Oh, and at the end of my turn, I heal the horror too. So many things. All right, cool. Uh, so the card and the resource, that's great. Uh, we're gonna go to the Mythos phase. One Doom, encounter card, twist of fate. Reveal a random token, taking a damage, two horror or nothing. I got a damage, which I will put on me, which doesn't make me that happy. I'm up to six. All right. I'm going to spend a clue. Man, I really need to get... Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend four resources to put three damage, and I'm going to play the Dynamite Blast to put three damage on the Hunting Horror. Right? His health is five. So there is that, but at least we got three on him. Because at some point we're probably going to want to kill him. And it's I had the opportunity to do it. It made some sense. I'm going to spend the clue to put another hall in play, and I'm going to just really hope against hope that this is... Oh, he's a four fight now. Oh, man, this is really bad. That this is the restricted hall. Please be restricted hall. Oh! It is not. It is the Hall of the Dead, which is decidedly not great. So after you fail a skill test while investigating the uh, Hall of the Dead, take a horror. Oh, man, I think that's the nail in the coffin. Oh, that's really bad. All right, enemy phase. This dude goes here. Upkeep phase. I'm going to draw a card. It's the Grave Digger Shovel. I don't hate that. Don't hate that one bit. And I get a resource. Mythos phase. Second Doom. Drawing this. Cursed Luck. Well, that was bound to happen. I try to get two clues. The most I can get my intellect up to is a two, five, seven, six to a three. If I succeed by two, I get both of those clues. But if I fail, I take a horror. Or I try to do a two to a one with the old key ring, which is super not ideal. I could put the Grave Digger Shovel in play, but honestly, and then try to get rid of it to get a clue. But honestly, I'm going to want the Grave Digger Shovel for that plus two combat to get the last two damage on the Hunting Horror. So... I think I try to get both of those clues and not use the old key ring. So I'm going to commit sharp vision. That gives me three more intellect. I'm going to commit unexpected courage. And hopefully I get... Oh, it's a four to a four. Yikes. I, I, at this point, I just wish he was massive. Oh, but then I take a... Damn. I mean, I could kill off Peter if I need to. Here we go. I'm doing a 7 to a, a 3. It becomes a 6 to a 3 because of Cursed Luck. I pulled a minus 2. Beautiful. So I got rid of Cursed Luck. I only get one of these clues because I didn't succeed by 2. But I only need one more clue. I'm not going to worry about that victory point. I have two more actions. I th oh, Man, and if I go through my deck, I die. And I have 7 cards left. That's awesome. I know that's a restricted hall. Uh, 
I'm going to put Gravedigger Shovel in play to give me some options here. That cost me two. And then I'm going to draw a card with my third action. Guts. Kind of useless. Enemy face. He comes and attacks me. I take one damage and one horror. Uh, upkeep. I draw a card. A survival knife would have been helpful about, I don't know, five seconds ago. And I get a resource. Meet those phase. You put a doom in play. It's the third doom. Draw on a counter card. Oh, that's really bad. Test three willpower or intellect. And if you fail, you lose one action for each point you fell by. Well. Here we go! It would be a really nice time for the Elder Sign, because I haven't pulled it yet, and uh, I could definitely go for getting a card out of my discard pile. So I'm going in at a minus one, which is always a good idea. Minus one again, I lose two actions. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to attack him with the Great Dipper Shovel. We'll get another damage on him, I think, with my one measly action. And I might as well commit Survival Knife. So 7 to a 4 for damage. I pull the Cultist. That's a minus 1. I succeed. That gives him 4 damage, but again, he has 5 health. At the end of my turn, I heal a Horror. But he attacks me. Peter is dead. So, and I'm going to need to get lucky to evade him now. Or I just have to kill him, which is really not ideal. Uh, Peter's dead. Uh, upkeep phase. I draw a card. Ooh. Live and learn. Could be clutch. I take a resource. Meet those phase. I put a doom on the agenda. I draw on a counter card. It is test three. Willpower. <laughs> I still haven't entered the ritual. Uh, this test has plus two difficulty in hunting cards. So I'm testing five willpower. If I fail, I must either discard the top five cards of my deck or dick one direct damage and deal. Oh, I'm dead either way. I'm super dead. I mean, it's a five because hunting cards at my location. Uh, so I'm going to discard the top five cards of my deck, or so I have to succeed. And I'm basically all I got is guts. I can't, I can't get rid of live and learn. So I'm doing a five to a five with guts, and I think this is about all she wrote, kids. I don't know how much more luck I have. And what do we got? Bam! Oh, tentacles. That's perfect. <laughs> so this is the the downgrade of live and learn. Um, I mean, I guess if, even if I had lucky, it doesn't matter because you can't you can't turn a win into a loss, a loss into a win with with the tentacles. Um, so what happens now is I could use live and learn, but I'm already dead because you actually carry out the entirety of the action, and then you can try again with a plus two. So that was just a really unfortunate sequence. I think uh, I mean if this was a restricted hall instead of the hall of the dead, I'm pretty sure we win that. Uh, because at that point, I can focus on just killing the hunting horror. Because he would have moved there immediately. Uh, well, also losing this, losing two actions with eph uh, ephemeral exhibits didn't help at all either. Um, so yeah, if I if if I got to the restricted hall, it's just two clues, and then also I would have had the benefit of having Harold Wallstead, which would have given me plus two intellect, uh, which would have between that and the old key ring and the grave digger shovel, sh grave digger shovel. It would have been pretty easy for me to get those last two clues as long as I could just deal with the hunting horror. But as it was, um, just a really unfortunate turn of cards. Uh, at some point, yeah, I mean, you the fact that he had two resources put on him that made him a health of a five, like, and I never, it just wasn't worth killing him because I knew as soon as I entered the restricted hall, he would re-enter play. 
and at that point he's massive um but then i have to deal with him again and i didn't think i was going to have enough turns to deal with that so if i got in here i killed him that doom goes away i have basically two rounds to get those clues um uh, and, and i should have been able to, to pull it off so that is unfortunate <laughs> what was this one uh the archives yeah so i'm glad i never went there it doesn't have a victory point it had no clues so that would have been kind of useless um, there are some weird connections that i don't really know why they bothered with when it comes to the exhibit halls uh, but ultimately so i fell um so i have to take a direct damage that kills me or i have to discard the top five cards of my deck if i do that that still kills me because of beyond the veil so i did die by damage so i will for the rest of this campaign take a trauma a uh, physical trauma uh, that might actually help me the next scenario, <laughs> the next scenario when I'm playing with Calvin Wright, right? Because he, he's a big fan of trauma because uh, it will really help him. And I will also have to spend, I only got one, two, two XP. I will have to spend one of those to put a test of will back in my deck because I definitely want to do that. So a lot of moving parts. Uh, you see the, the treacheries uh, that are added with the return to do up the ante a little bit. Oppressive mist can be pretty brutal. Uh, that was that was kind of gross. Again, getting two resources on there without really anything I could do about it wasn't great. But um, you know, all in all, it is what it is. A pretty, I think I played it fairly well. I, I kind of liked using a test of will when I did, just to make sure I could I could actually give myself a chance. And I thought it was going to come together. Uh, but I mean, really, if I don't pull those tentacles when I did that, uh, that was three damage to the graveyard ghouls. I probably kill. I probably do kill Hunting Horror then, and then this whole scenario plays out a uh, pretty different. Perfect pull. Oh, at the end? Yeah, dude. <laughs> it, I tell you, man, my, my script writers are so good at just the stories they've been creating for these playthroughs. Uh, so look, next scenario is one of my favorite. Uh, it is the, uh, the, the um, Essex County Express uh, it is a very, very cool uh, scenario. Uh, running through the train. The return through definitely ups the ante. Uh, it is a scenario I do think plays easier solo than multiplayer uh, for a couple of reasons. So we'll see if that bears true. But again, the, the return through makes it hard no matter what. Uh, Steve, uh, I don't know if he's still hanging around. Not uh, Yeah, Steve, Stephen. Uh, Steven EMPA, uh, I think we played that together about seven times before he finally beat it the first time. Uh, so we'll see. But yeah, so we, we lost. So we didn't find the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon was uh, not recovered. It is now currently lost uh, to the cultists, and now we need to chase after them to try to get it back from them before they use it for their ill-gotten gains. Honestly, the Necronomicon, the Necronomicon, getting the Necronomicon makes things easier, but I think this scenario is a lot, a lot more interesting when you don't get it, right? Um, that's a matter of personal opinion. I mean, you actually have to add a token to the bag, so it may make it hard. It depends. It depends on what angle you come from. It makes scenario six a lot harder, that's for sure, if you take it, because you have that a token. But I do find that it, it makes scenario seven a lot easier, and that's that's really huge. <laughs> yeah, I despise the train. <laughs> That's about right. Uh, but this was great. I hope this was a needed distraction for many of you today. Uh, we will be back. Um, I got three live playthroughs. Well, two at the end of this month and then one coming up in March. On the 20th, we are doing a live playthrough of, uh, I think I'm going to try to do a Volcaris Quest on Legendary live, So, which is kind of insane, but why not? We'll, we'll see how that goes for me. The 27th, uh, our Eric Royce is coming on the channel. Spirit Island fans, be ready for that. Uh, really excited about that. He's been really gracious to to uh, to be willing to do that, and I think that's going to be super super cool. Uh, and then after it's like we'll have like 10, 20 minutes with him. Um, longer if I can get it, but we'll see. Uh, and then we'll do the, a playthrough of Volcano. And then on the first week, uh, first Wednesday of March, I do have a live playthrough. Uh, I'll do my next. Uh, Lucenaria for Calvin Wright. What a what a cool investigator. Uh, one of my favorites for sure. So my one of my top tens. I think Yurik was number ten for me. He uh, he might have been nine. So he's I guess he lost. At least Zoe represented my top ten list a little bit better in the Return to Zelda campaign. Uh, what would Spirit Island? <laughs> That's great. There's two Steves. I know, I know. It's funny. I see it. That's hilarious. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I'm looking at the comments, making sure I'm not missing anything. 
But I think we're I think we are good. Um, thanks again to Mrs. Playthroughs for all of her support of the channel and making sure this runs as smoothly as possible. And thanks to all of you for joining me. Till next time, happy gaming.